Hi guys, Mr. Off Waffles here. This is your, well, maybe a little bit of nonsense guide to the Shinonuma Reborn Easter Egg in Vanguard Zombies. Loadout recommendation is this shotgun. Once again, it still just absolutely shreds everything. I highly recommend. I have a loadout guide that I'll link down below if you need more details. I also recommend Ether Shroud as your field upgrade of choice. Many of the steps in this Easter Egg can be done in varying orders, but I'm going to show you an order that I think is decently well optimized and just makes for a fairly straightforward playing experience. We're going to open this debris downstairs first, and then this door into the doctor's quarters second. And that's because we want to make use of the Boom Shryer round, which is this map's version of dogs. They run after you and explode when they reach you. It's those things. So open up the doctor's quarters and then head in there on your Boom Shryer round and walk over to this stone monolith. Blow up three Boom Shryers next to it and all the vines around it will be cleared and you'll have completed this step for now. From here, I recommend you head towards the fishing hut. And I'd quickly say here, don't worry about saving zombies at the end of every round and trying to keep the round as low as possible, because there's a later step where we'll need one of these Zabala witch mini bosses to spawn in, and they start spawning at round 15. So you can just burn rounds as you head towards round 15. That's absolutely fine. Now, really quickly, if the community finds a way to force spawn in Zabala earlier in your game, I will link that information in the description down below. There'll be plenty more helpful information in there as well. So if you get stuck, at any time in this guide, just head down to that description. So, tangent over, I said we were heading to the fishing hut. Once you get in there, take a right, and right behind the door, you'll see a barrel of the Wunderwaffe, which you can pick up. Bring that to the comm room, and in front of the building, you'll find this radio tower. Hold square to place the barrel inside the radio tower, and then end the round and hold your ground, because it's defense time. It's gonna last about 60 seconds, and you just have to prevent zombies from attacking the radio tower. Once the defense ends, you have three things to do. Number one, pick up the barrel from the radio tower. Number two, go over to this metal box inside the comms room and hold square on it to pick up a vacuum tube, which should now be charged. Number three, just to the side of you here, there'll be another sort of disc on a table that you need to pick up. For the next step, you're going to want a fairly large horde of zombies, so maybe take an opportunity here to go pack a punch your shotgun. Maybe to also run around all the different huts and grab the perks that spawn in them. Remember, your first perk tier is free, and you will not lose your first perk tier if you go down, whereas higher tiers you will lose each time you down. So getting that tier one costs you nothing. You may also have enough to buy tier one armor here, which can be done from the pack a punch area of the map just here. Once you're done stretching your legs, touching grass, and rounding up a big bunch of zombies, like I said, you need to go to the storage hut and activate the trap in there. Now, there's an optimized way to do this and then just a less optimized way. I'm going to tell you the optimized way, but listen to this whole section first before you do it in game, just so you don't accidentally kill yourself, okay? So you need to run over to the storage hut and activate the trap. And when you start trapping, it's going to start zapping, but only for a second, after which it's immediately going to break. You can fix it, though, using that part that we picked up from the table a little earlier on. So run over to the trap switch, hold square on it, and you'll put the part inside and the trap will start zapping once again. Now, while the trap's zapping here, you need to get a bunch of zombie kills with it. And the reason I said before to keep a big horde is you can do this all in one trap activation and just avoid wasting an extra thousand points if you kill off that big horde as soon as you fix the trap. Like, it'll stay on for another 30, 45 seconds or so, and you can just complete the step super easily. But if the trap goes off and you haven't got enough kills, then you just need to reactivate the trap, get more zombie kills, and you'll eventually get an audio prompt telling you that the vacuum tube is charged. By this point, you should be getting up in the rounds. Maybe you're on round 10, something like that. So keep pushing through the rounds until this mini boss spawns in. She's called Zabala. She's kind of like a witch thing with three faces. And you need her to shoot out her little zappy trip mines three times in a row in front of this piece of equipment. After the first time, you'll see some purple electricity that is kind of wrapping itself around the equipment. And that's a sign you're on the right track. Do it two more times and there'll be another vacuum tube right next to that machine, which you can pick up. Good news. You've built the Wunderwaffe. So go to the storage hut and craft it on the bench on the right hand side. You will need this for the next step in the Easter egg and for the boss fight. So hold on to it for the rest of your game and pack a punch it to pap level one pretty much as soon as you can. Next, we're going to do a little bit of searching for parts. Now, we could have done this at any point in the game, but I wanted to put it at this point in the guide just so it's collected with the reason that we're doing this. We're looking for three cipher wheel parts and three pieces of paper with little symbols on them. The cipher wheel spawn points are as follows. 
follows. Number one is in the spawn area downstairs on this little sort of table here. Number two is in front of the Pack-A-Punch machine on this bench on the left-hand side. And the third is in the doctor's quarters in this kind of back room here in the corner. Pick up all of those and then do a little tour around the map looking for the following pieces of paper. There's one above the crafting table by the Pack-A-Punch machine. You're going to want to make a note of the symbol that you see there. The next is in the comm room. And once again, make a note of the symbol that you find on that sheet of paper. And the third is in the spawn area of the map, the main hut, downstairs on a table. And to fully see the symbol, you need to shoot some books which are lying on top of it and they'll fly away and you'll basically reveal the full symbol. Now we're going to run over to that stone obelisk that we opened up right at the beginning of the game in the doctor's quarters. You're going to hold square on that to enter your three cipher wheels that you found around the map. And then you need to enter a code. Specifically, you're putting symbols in this top middle column. You see there's a little arrow pointing down at the top of this thing. That's the line that we're putting our symbols in. You need to cast your mind back to those three pieces of paper that you found around the map. And then you need to translate using this image. I've made it easy for you by numbering them all so that while you're running around the map, you can just remember three numbers. You can be like, oh, okay, yep, that's that symbol and put that into the cipher wheels. We'll do an example with my game here to make it extra obvious. In my game, I had these three symbols. And so first I'm going to put in this translated symbol, the L kind of looking one, which ends up being two triangles and a circle in the middle. Then next I'm going to do this kind of cross with a base under it. And that translates to this, which I'm putting in in the next row. And finally, this symbol translates to this kind of six with a cross in it looking thing. So I'm putting that in the final row. Once finished, I'm going to hold square and that's going to complete this step. For the next step, you're going to need all players in your game present and in this exact area. And we're going to be starting a lockdown here. So make sure that you've bought armor potentially. And also decoys and monkeys are extremely useful for this. You also must have the Wunderwaffe and you're going to want to have speed cola because it reloads so damn slowly. Oh my God. So you're in the doctor's quarters. If you've got two people in the game, you'll have two podiums in this area lit up and glowing red. Three people in the game, three podiums, etc. You each need to go to a podium or just go to your own single podium if you're in solo and hold square on them at the same time to start the lockdown sequence. Have you and any of your teammates stand on this central island by that stone pillar and use the Wunderwaffe to shoot any zombies with glowing blue around them when they spawn in. But you must shoot them when they're near that central area. If they're too far away, their souls will not fly into that stone pillar. But if they're nice and close, they will do. And you just need to get a bunch of kills. I'm talking a lot of kills. You have to be so rapid with this. And if you succeed, you'll get a white flash and they'll say, well done, and you'll move on. However, this one's really tricky. And I almost guarantee the first time you try this, you will fail. Don't worry. Don't be disheartened. Just make sure you've got full ammo for your next attempt. Go to the next round so that those individual red pillars that you activated before are recharged and ready to activate again. And then hold square together with your team. Start the lockdown and try chucking decoys in that central area, chucking monkey bombs in that central area, but making sure you only get kills on the blue zombies with the Wunderwaffe. Also, the gunners are really annoying in this part of the map because it's just so open and the Wunderwaffe will kill them in basically one shot at this point. So feel free to use the WAF on them as well. And also, honestly, use the WAF on the red pest zombies, but be careful because when they blow up, they can kill the blue zombies, the blue glowing ones, and then you won't collect a soul. So just be careful about that, but try and bunch up as many zombies in that central area as you can and prioritize shooting all the blue glowing ones with the Wunderwaffe. Ether Shroud also is very useful here, but bear in mind, if you use it, the zombies will run away and that might make blue zombies run away from that central area where you need them to be in order to collect their souls. Once that's done successfully, you'll get a white flash on your screen and a blue orb will spawn in and start talking to you for a little while, which is your cue to start prepping for the next step, which is activating the flogger to kill zombies and fill up this perk fountain with blood. Once you have enough flogger kills, run over to the fountain, which will now be filled and hold square to drink the blood. This is going to activate a kind of zombie vision for you. And you then need to run around the map looking for two things. One is a red floating ball of energy, which you need to run into while in zombie vision and then follow around the map wherever it takes you. While you do that, loads of boom shriers are going to spawn in. So be careful here. Prioritize your life over just doing the step because you can always return to this and pick up your progress later. If you get into a hairy situation and you need to leave for a second. Once it gets to its destination, it will turn into a mirror part for you to pick up. You will also 
need to find a second mirror part, and this one is more fiddly. It's going to be hidden somewhere around the map, and you can tell where it's hidden by looking at this map, which will have it marked on it, but only while you're in zombie vision mode. Here's an example of me running and finding it in the comm room. If you're struggling to see it specifically, listen out for it, because it does also make a very specific ringing noise. Now, when you find it, you need to shoot it down and then pick it up once it lands on the floor. But don't get mixed up with these things, which look like they might be the mirror parts, but actually they're parts of a bunny teddy bear. It's a separate thing. Don't let this one confuse you. If you're really stuck, there'll be more info in the description, like I mentioned, so you can check like a master list and find it that way. And if your zombie blood runs out, don't worry. Just go over to the fountain, hold square to drink more blood, or if it's out of blood, get more flogger kills to fill the fountain back up so you can go back into zombie vision. Once you've collected both mirror pieces, go to the Pack-a-Punch dig site area and place those parts onto this podium. This will cause some essence to spawn in on top of the pillars in the surrounding area. If you're in solo, there'll just be one of them that's lit up. If you're in co-op, there'll be multiple depending on your player count. You, with your teammates, if you have them, need to each hold square on one of those lit up podiums, and that will cause them all to raise into the air and fly across the map. The easiest way to complete this step is to keep an eye on where your particular essence flies to once it raises from your podium when you activate it. Run as fast as you can towards where you saw your essence fly to, and once you reach its new location, shoot it and it should move again. Keep an eye on exactly where it goes because you need to then find it in its new location, shoot it, and then find it in its third and final location before shooting it and returning it back to that pack-a-punch area of the map. If you have teammates in your game, they need to also be doing this with their own respective essences in other areas of the map while you do yours. But if you're in solo, it's just one orb and it's nice and straightforward. In co-op, you then need to go back to that pack-a-punch area and do the same thing again. You'll get a selection of new spawns for those balls to fly to and you then need to just chase them down and shoot them just like you just did. If you fail at any point during this or the previous part of it, you'll just reset back to the beginning of this essence step. So again, prioritize staying alive here. That's much more important than trying to clutch up because you can just always redo it if you need to. It also makes this a little easier to have a long ranged weapon, not just a shotgun, because it'll save you time and you can shoot the balls from afar. So once you've done it multiple times in co-op or your one time in solo, run back to the pack-a-punch area and hold square on the lit up podium to summon Echo. This is the boss fight. So if you want to do a really quick run to perks and stuff before you do that, then now's the time. Take the opportunity to craft some decoys or monkey bombs, make sure your armor's repaired, that sort of thing. As mentioned previously, you also have to have the Wunderwaffe for this, so make sure you've got that before you start the boss fight. When the fight begins, you'll just need to focus on survival for a second, and you'll then see a zombie spawn in with a blue glow around it. Shoot it with the Wunderwaffe when it's in the central area, and you will see its soul fly into that central podium. Do this for like 20 kills or so, feeding those souls into the center, and you'll then see a bubble form and you need to lure Echo into that central area as well. She'll then go into a damage phase. You'll be able to shoot her. So just go crazy until everything resets. You'll get a max ammo. You'll get a fresh armor and you'll then start the next phase of the boss fight. This time, it's not going to be those same zombies that are glowing blue. Instead, it's going to be the pest zombies. So shoot those pest zombies glowing blue with your Wunderwaffe. Eventually, you'll trigger a bubble. It's a damage phase. Shoot the boss in the face. And then one final time, you'll get a max ammo, fresh armor, and you need to do the same one more time. But this time, it's the Sturmkriegers. That's the armed, armored zombies that are going to be glowing blue. So shoot those in the Wunderwaffe. It might take two shots to kill them and feed their soul into it. But do that. Bubble will form. It's a damage phase. Shoot her in the head and you're done. Easter egg complete. Now, while you're writing a comment saying, thank you so much, Mr. Ruff Waffles, for this amazing no-nonsense guide, you can also have one of your teammates run over to that central podium and grab the mirror that is now fully formed there. That's really the final step in the quest, and you're done. Thanks for watching. Drop a like if you've enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.